As long as the towns remember, a battle has been waged between two small towns in Texas. The generals shout commands at their shoulders over the beating drums of war, hoping they can get a victory over the other side. Although the battlefield does get bloody, soldiers fight valiantly to win, and the town comes together to watch a good old-fashioned game of football. Well, the rivalry is, is uh, one of the oldest rivalries in the, in the history of the state. It's the same. It's two communities that, that really like each other, but when they play, it's just a normal, typical high school rivalry. And two schools that are five miles apart that are basically the same type of kids. And, uh, it's an easy game to schedule, even if it's a road game or a home game. It feels like a home game, uh, uh, pretty much. And, and it gets a lot of people excited in the county about the football season and getting, up and getting, getting things going and a little trash talking and a little bragging rights for a year. So uh, I think it's, you know, it makes sense to play that game every year as long as we can, you know, as long as the enrollments don't get, get out of hand. With Highway 181 connecting the towns, this fierce rivalry has been pitting friends and families against each other for 100 games. We played the game and they played the game. Oh, I played whatever was available. I was so small that I've moved around. My name is J.E. Baker and I'm from Schott, Texas. And I graduated in 1946. I was in school 1946 with my senior year, and the war was over, and uh, we had uh, just barely had enough boys for a football team. They supported us. Uh, they, they during the war for, for the war years, they did a, I think a, a good job. But we were limited to, to what we did, like you say, transportation and everything. But. Uh, Nope, I don't recognize this. I don't think ours were this good. <laughs> hey. All right, all right. Uh, had to borrow a hat if one of them got broke because we didn't have a replacement. <laughs> Times were tough during the war year, you know. <laughs> The first year I got to play him, we got, we got smashed pretty good. I think it was 59-2 and two or something like that. And then, of course, after that, all I heard was, y'all ain't ever going to beat them. Y'all aren't ever going to do this. So when we kind of did it, it was kind of, a, I guess, a sense of relief. It, it made it even more special. You know, it ended a nine, ten-year drought, or maybe even longer, that uh, Kennedy had lost that many games in a row to Carn City, so. A rivalry is a competition or fighting between people, businesses, or organizations who are in the same area or want the same things. And in our case, both sides are itching to get a win. I'm Dedrick Wilson. Uh, I was Kennedy's starting quarterback for the past four years. It's always a big game, it's always a big rivalry. It's been going on for years and years and years. And uh, no matter if Carson comes out top or Kennedy comes out top, it's, it's always something fun to partake in. And Oh, there's a ton of trash talking. From like the moment you stepped onto the field to the moment you left it. Oh, without a doubt, Carson is the best team. Um, I don't think those are appropriate for camera. <laughs> <laughs> Although the game has carried on for so long, it is dying out. School spirit is dying faster than iPhone batteries. With technology on the rise, old-fashioned things of the past, like rivalry football games, are falling victim to Fortnite, Snapchat, and Netflix. 100 games is not an easy task. There are approximately 10 rivalries in the state of Texas with at least 100 games. Seguin vs. New Braunfels, Quero vs. Yoakum, and El Campo vs. Bay City, to name a few. I was an avid badger and I still... I, if I would have known I was on video, I would have worn orange and black. I assure you I would have worn orange and black. 
we want it just as bad as they do. So every time we line up against each other, it's, you know, winner takes all. Uh, you can throw the records out the, out the windows. Uh, doesn't matter how good or how bad you are, it's gonna be a competitive game. It's always one town trying to aggravate the other one or just get that rivalry going, but nothing to mean harm in anyone. It's the, just the closeness and the proximity of the two schools make it uh, a very special rivalry. I think that's pretty amazing that, you know, you could be playing a team for that many years. I think about Texas and A&M and that rivalry where it's no longer there anymore because we're different places. I think to go 100 games like that, that's a pretty good thing. Also, after it was over, I sat back and, and just thought, man, you know, you were a part of, of coaching the 100th game, but you also played in four of them. And It's been great for both Carn City and Kennedy in a lot of ways because it generates a lot of excitement in both towns. People get very excited about it. I remember going to the pep rallies and going to the football games. And if you were not at the football game on Friday night, like what were you doing? Everybody was like, are you going to the game later? Are you going to the game tonight? And that was just a big memory. It's been fun watching it go and hopefully we can get it back to where it's a little more competitive, but uh, you know, Kenny's gonna have to grow and enroll it. And go Badgers, let's get them. Go Lions. Badger pride never dies. Go Lions, go. <laughs> Over the years, divisions have changed and traditions have faded, but the Kennedy vs. Carn City football game has fought the test of time. The game has become much more than a rivalry, but a deep-rooted tradition, encouraging camaraderie throughout the schools and community.